about any pit you're in right now if you want to be delivered. How many know you got to have a want to in your heart? You got to want to be saved. You got to believe to be healed. You got to want to be delivered from the bondages that hold you captive and torment your mind and tell you life ain't worth living. Mm -hmm. Now we turn to Psalms chapter 51, verses 15 through 17. Again, David, this is after he sinned a horrible sin against God. This is after he committed adultery. David, the apple of God's eye. Not perfect. And, 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 and anybody else would have been slain and dead. Like King Saul. Why? What was the difference between King Saul and King David? King Saul never really truly repented from his heart. David did. And when you get a chance, read the whole chapter. But let me read... Here I'm setting the stage. David not only committed adultery in the eyes of God, he committed murder. He killed a woman's husband, Bathsheba's husband, to have her. Ooh, how low can you go? Mm, nothing's changed. And yet, it cost him his kingdom for a season, barely his life. But he knew how not only to praise God at the good times or to praise Him and wait on Him and be patient through the hard times, he also knew how to repent. He also knew that God was merciful if we ask for mercy. Yes, we reap what we sow, and David did. Terribly. Terribly. Lost his first son. Lost his kingdom again for a season. But here, listen. O oh Lord, verse 15. Thou, my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Because he confesses, I deserve what I get. I ain't blaming anybody else. I ain't making no excuses. This is on me. And he says, I'm still going to praise you. Ooh. Why? Because there's nobody else can I go to. Who else can save my soul? Who else can heal my body? Who else can deliver me from the clutches of sin, Satan, and hell, but Almighty God? And he knew that. He realized it. Verse 16, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings, in other words, you can't buy God's love. You can't buy His blessings by works. Making sacrifices. <laughs> oh, Lord, I made a big sacrifice. I put $100 in the plate today. Lord, I made a big sacrifice. I gave a lot of food to the poor and the homeless and this and that. They're, they're good things, but they don't save you. That's right. That's right. They don't save you. David said, or else I'd do that. I'd, I'd kill a thousand bulls in their day. A thousand rams and lambs, whatever it took, I'd do it. But that won't, won't, I won't help me. What does he say? Verse 17 tells it. The sacrifices of God, in other words, what he was looking for, are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. God wants you to be broken. God wants you to repent from your heart. God wants you to be sincere. God wants you to be serious with Him. That's the sacrifice God's looking for. Amen. He said, that kind of sacrifice will you not despise, but will receive and accept it. Somebody say amen. amen. And who among us has not sinned? Who among us has not messed up? I told you last week, I only made two mistakes this year so far. <laughs> Not bad. I just made another one for lying. Amen. But God in His mercy, hallelujah, God in His mercy, for if it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord, we'd all be destroyed. I'm not here pointing a finger at anybody. If I point a finger at you, i got three fingers and a thumb back at me. Check it out. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not here to judge anybody. That's God's job. I'm here to preach and teach the Word of God. you got to decide what you want to do with it. That's right. Amen? Believe it and receive it or reject it. 
But he said, if you reject me, I must reject you. Don't reject the Lord. <clears throat> this is serious stuff. We, the Bible said you can't play with fire without getting burnt. And God's a consuming fire. And one day, very soon, we're all going to stand before Him and give an account of ourselves. What we've done, the Bible said, in our lifetime, in our body, yes. the way we thought, the way we acted, that's why we need to repent. We've got too many strikes against us. Can I get an amen? amen. We got way, I do, I don't know about you, we got too many strikes against us. We need to repent and stay in a repentful mood. Yes. We need to love even our enemies. Yes. We need to forgive those who've hurt us and crushed us. <laughs> Stabbed us in the back. Call it what you will. Yes. That's what Christianity is all about. Amen? Then you'll see God. Hallelujah. Amen. Who among us has not sinned against the Lord? As David did. But here we see David again knew how to repent as well as praise the Lord. We as God's people should not only... We don't have to look far. We don't have to look far to see uh, to, 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 or, or think hard of how much God loves us. We should know that. And you should not be talked at by any devil or any person. That's right. Amen. You have to look far or think hard. God's right here, right here. That's right. He should be at the center of our heart. What occupies or who occupies the center of your heart? Things? People? Who's your God? Who's in the most depths of your soul. Can I get a witness? We as God's people should know that His mercy, the Bible said His mercy endureth forever. But He ain't going to put up with us forever. <laughs> Ooh, His grace. His grace is poured out now. There's coming a time right around the corner when there will be no more grace. When, be, when that rapture takes place, the grace period is over. It's now. God will pour out His grace upon you if you cry out to the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I need you. I need your help. I can't do this alone. Your hands are too short to box with God. You'll lose every round. We're not talking about just you know, any little old decision we're making. We're talking about the most important decision of your life. Because we're talking about eternity. Bible said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Or what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? That's what we're talking about. That's what's more important than anything else. Because when this life is over, it's all about your soul. What did you do with Jesus? Did you receive him? Accept him? Or reject them. That's what it comes down to. But in the meantime, we can enjoy right now His grace, His mercy. The Bible says His compassion that faileth not. His mercies are new every morning if you call on them. That's how you receive the blessings and the favor of God, the goodness of God. When you love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. This ain't about religion. I'm not a religious person. I'm in a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a personal relationship. Hallelujah. That gives me the license. Amen. To be heaven bound. In order to be heaven bound, you've got to be born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I thank God for His patience. And his long suffering. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse fifteen. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable words cannot express our gratitude. There's no words to describe his unspeakable gifts. What is that? So many things, but just a few of his gifts is his son Jesus Christ, number one. 
How much He loved us. While we were yet sinners, the Bible said, Christ died for us. Who would die for a sinner? The Bible said we would die maybe for a great friend or family member. We'd take a bullet for him, right? But who would die for a sinner? <laughs> Jesus did. Mm. Family is a gift. That's why the devil works so hard at destroying families. From within. He said, if I can get them from within. And he destroys whole families. The Bible even says in the last days, some of our own enemies will be in our own household. Some will be for Christ. Some will be against Christ. Ooh. Bible says it like this. Husband and wife. Be two in the bed. On that day when Jesus comes in the rapture. One will be taken. The other left behind. One was saved. The other was not. Two. Working at the mill. Or wherever you work. One will be taken. One will be left behind. One was saved. One was not. And how's it, how fast it's going to happen? That quick, like a twinkling of an eye. That's right. Ooh, glory be to you. you got to be ready. Yes. Ain't you glad you're ready? Anybody's Amen. ready? Let me see anybody ready. Amen. Mm, stay ready. <laughs> Bible says, for in such an hour that you think not, the Son of Man will come. You know how, you know, you, somebody said, where is hell? I said, put your hand on your heart. Feel it beating? Yeah. Let us skip a beating. If you don't know Jesus, you'll find out where hell is real quick. Mm. Said that, said that at a, to a man at a funeral once. He said, what do I got to do to be saved? <laughs> Ain't mine. Need to be saved and stay saved. Amen. You save God. Thank God if you have a family. Thank God if you have a ministry. And every new Christian or otherwise, every born again Christian ought to have some kind of ministry. You don't have to have a title to have a ministry. Amen. Share your testimony. Share the love of God. Give out tracts. Whatever you do, it's a ministry unto the Lord. Amen? Amen? And thank God for those that you see here. We took testimony before. <coughs> our blessings. And, and, and each one of you are a blessing to, to this pastor and to hopefully one another. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Oh my, did I read that right? <laughs> I've seen some of you look up. <laughs> because we don't stop there. If we stopped there, we'd be in trouble. That sounds terrible. Thank God ye were ser servants of sin. But it goes on. But he have obeyed from the heart. Oh, I love this. The form of doctrine or the, from the Bible which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants now of righteousness. 